Welcome to the video for today. And I want to start off by saying that I apologize because this video is going to be a complete 180 from the last video where I was talking about how the daily grind of life is kind of killing me on the inside. Today's video is going to be a lot more lighthearted and I guess informative. Today's video, is, if you can tell from the title, is going to be on cameras and more specifically an Apple camera. Now on this channel, I really want to focus on things like vlogging, cars, and tech. Unfortunately, the car stuff is going, I went from like, what did I do, three to three again? Anyways, I'm going from the car stuff down to the vlogging and tech stuff, much more specifically camera stuff today. Because of the way things are going on with money lately, won't be able to do much on car stuff for a little while, but I can talk about tech. So there's that. Anyways, if you liked the video, uh, make sure you leave a like down below. If you didn't dislike it, I guess, and consider subscribing to the channel where I will be talking more about tech stuff and doing vlogs from time to time. And eventually when I can get back to it, maybe I'll do some car vlogs. But anyways, let's get started on the video today. I think I spent enough time not talking about it, but I think that Apple really should come out with their own dedicated camera. You know, not a camera that's on one of these smartphones, but an actual mirrorless camera. Now, lately I've been getting more and more into photography and videography. I've been doing a lot of research on cameras and techniques and stuff and actually understanding what ISOs and apertures and f-stops and all that stuff means. And the more I research into this stuff, the more I realize that I think it would be a great idea if Apple came out with their own camera. Now the reason why I say that is because as I've been doing more and more research on cameras trying to figure out what's the next camera I want to get because as it is right now I do a lot of my photography on one of these. This is a Sony RX100 Mark V and I also do a lot of photography on my smartphone. This is the iPhone 11 Pro Max in that nice Boba Fett green if you can't tell. It's very nice. I love this color. And my wife does a lot of her photography on the camera that I'm actually recording this video on, which is the Canon EOS M50, which is a camera I actually have grown to love a lot and I kind of wish that I got myself one of these cameras, but that's why I'm doing research right now. What is the next camera I kind of want to get to replace this camera? But what, from what I've been learning from all my research is that all of these cameras that are out right now, for the most part, depending on what your price range is. If you're someone like me where you definitely cannot spend over a thousand dollars, especially not over two thousand dollars on a camera, those cameras do not have a lot of the features that you know typical people like myself that can't afford these three thousand plus dollar cameras up to like twenty thousand dollars I think can't afford those cameras but there are cameras that are in our price range that do not have all the features and functions that we would like to have or need in a camera. And so that got me thinking, you can get one of these phones, this iPhone 11 Pro Max, and this is a smartphone. This, this phone does a lot more things other than just take pictures and videos. You know, you can make phone calls, go on the internet, do all sorts of things with these phones. And this phone right here, for 256 gigabytes of storage, internal storage, um, you're looking at around twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, I think, brand new, versus some of these cameras that are out right now, which are like three thousand dollars and still can't really reproduce some of the same stuff that this phone can do when it comes to videos and photography. Now, let me get into that before some of the people start raging in the comment section below talking about how, what are you talking about? These mirrorless cameras can do way more than this, these dinky little smartphones, especially in low light, all that jazz. Let me get into it. Now, for what you get on these phones, for the 12 megapixel and like, I don't even know what kind, what size the sensor is on the inside. I think it's like five eighths of an inch or something. I'm probably way old, giving it way more credit than the camera deserves. But for these cameras that are on these smartphones, they put out incredible, incredible videos and pictures for for these, for these little things. They, they give a lot of uh, mirrorless cameras a run for their money because of the quality. I'm sorry, that must have hurt me putting my finger on, on the lens. But 
for the money and for the, the size of these cameras, they really give these mirrorless and DSLR cameras a run for their money. Especially when you're in like perfect conditions outside where there's plenty of daylight. But for what you get in these cameras, I think you get a lot more out of something like a mirrorless camera. So I think if Apple really buckled down and actually created a mirrorless camera, where an inset mirrorless camera, they put the processor of these phones into that camera, we got a winner on our hand. Especially, and also if they put the features that are in the camera app that the iPhones have in that camera, plus you know the standard extras that each of these cameras typically come with, plus with like an iOS kind of OS on the camera, so it, it can be really easy for anybody to understand what these different options and menus do easy to navigate and all that stuff versus like <laughs> the menu system and the Sony cameras which are awful. I think Apple could have a really big winner on their hand. Another point that I would like to give to Apple if they were able to create their own camera is that on these phones, we can record at 4K 30 with HDR. With H 4K 30 with HDR, which is insane. If you've ever seen any videos online of what these cameras can do, again, broad daylight, plenty of light with HDR on, it's incredible. And it's something that I would really love in a camera myself because for me, I'm a colorblind person, so doing the color correction afterward, it's not something that I can really do that easily, especially for people that would suggest to kind of circumvent or get kind of the same thing that you get with HDR on these cameras. They would usually say you should record an S log or or whatever those other logs are to kind of get the uh, the more muted tones that you can do post production color correction. I can't really do it. So for people like me that are colorblind, the HDR function to me at least is incredible and it's, it works well enough and it's something that I can just record and just post. Well, after I edit it, of course, versus something like shooting on a dedicated mirrorless camera or Sony, you have to do post color correction on your videos and for me I usually just do the automatic thing on the iPhone I don't know how good the colors actually are when they're produced but besides all that if you could get HDR recording at 4k 30 on a mirrorless camera for a good price below 1500 bucks Apple will have a winner on their hand plus these processors are super powerful like <laughs> They can do a lot of things, and I can't even imagine what kind of things they'll be able to do on a dedicated camera. You know, something that has 24 megapixels like the Canon EOS M50 versus the 12 on this phone. So it's like double the megapixel count. Plus the sensor size on that camera is way bigger than the one on this iPhone. But the other thing I want to talk about is how the iPhone does a lot of post-processing of the photos where it really brings out the details of the photos. I think they call it like deep fusion or something where it brings out like <laughs> the little details in sweatshirts and stuff. It's pretty cool stuff. Plus the low light photography, the, um, I guess the, I forget what they call it, the low light photography mode in the iPhone, but it's pretty incredible where you can just handheld hold your phone for like three seconds and you can get an incredible low light nighttime photo versus having something like a dedicated camera where if you try to handhold it, especially without like uh, IBIS or any kind of image stabilization, the camera is just going to, at least for me, because my hands shake a lot, the photos are always going to come out fuzzy for me. So if I could get like the same kind of technology and processing as you do with these photos in a camera, let me tell you, it would be a game changer. Especially, again, I'm going to keep reiterating on this, if the price can be below $1,500 for a new camera with with internal storage that would be amazing so a camera with internal storage and a slot for it um, for expanded storage would be amazing i think apple could do it for less than fifteen hundred dollars but let's be serious apple it's apple so it'd be like a two thousand dollar camera i would really hope that they could keep it below fifteen hundred especially because the camera will most likely not have any kind of smartphone features in it Unless, I just blew my own mind just now, unless Apple decides they want to put cellular in these cameras where we can take photos with these cameras, maybe even do a little photo editing like we can do on our phones and then post it straight to Instagram from our cameras. 
That would be in, insane. That would okay. That at that point would be worth two thousand dollars if you could take insane photos with the camera, do some uh, photo editing on the camera, and then directly post it to Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or wherever you want to put this photo. That's amazing. <laughs> I just blew my own mind with that. But Apple, I think it'd be a really good idea if you came out with your own camera. Um, you know, have your own lens with it all that fun stuff you know get all the technology that you have for these phones inside said camera with all the processing and all the you know just all the stuff that you do in these phones i can't even imagine what it will look like on a camera with a, a bigger sensor size and a bigger megapixel count plus if it had like data capabilities internal storage with expandable memory uh, optional with lenses that you can switch out the apple camera would be amazing so I, that's that's why I think Apple should come out with their own camera. At least that's just for me. For somebody that's like a budding photographer, budding videographer, whatever you want to call it. I'm a noob. I'm learning all this stuff. But the more I learn about these cameras, the more I wish Apple just had their own camera with their own OS on it that makes it easy to navigate. And, you know, oh, and then I just had another thought another Apple product in its ecosystem that will make it like they can connect with each other, communicate with each other, you know, do a form of airdrop from the camera to the iPhone instead of having to do all these con weird connection things where you have to connect through Bluetooth or connect through Wi-Fi on the camera to your phone and go through the whole app and whatnot. If you could just airdrop it from your camera to your phone, that would also be amazing along with the videos and hopefully not lose any kind of resolution or or any of that but anyways that's my thought um, I do love this camera well I like this camera I love the Canon and I love what you can do with the iPhone now if we could get all that <laughs> together Apple that'd be amazing it, I think it would be a game changer it, it would really shake up the camera world because I feel like the camera industry hasn't been <sighs> treating Apple as a threat as they probably should I mean, like I said earlier, these cameras are actually giving a lot of mirrorless and DSLR cameras around for their money when it comes to the quality of these videos and photos, especially with the HDR of these phones. The HDR function is amazing and it makes doing stuff like that way easier for a colorblind person like myself. Anyways, those, those are just my thoughts. Tell me what you think down below if you agree with me or disagree. Make sure you thumbs up the video or thumbs down it if you don't like it. Or if you disagree with me, tell me why down below. And consider subscribing to the channel. Like I said, I'm going to try to do a lot of tech videos and vlogs. And I'll get back into the car scene whenever I can. But for now, tech and vlogs is what I'll be focusing on. And I'll catch up with you in the next video. Peace. Oh,